not, you not notice that ever since you got here, I keep doing like this like southern like, yeah, I accent. Know. <laughs> I was in the bathroom. Oh, why? I was in the bathroom when I, I, I took a piss in the bathroom, right? And then I looked in the mirror and I, and I said this. I'm not even kidding. I said, why does right? Why does right? Because <laughs> yeah, you we're, we're talking about rice, but then I just said that. That's your water, by the way, if you want water. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. But yeah, guys, if you don't. Start talking so they know what you sound like. Cause I sound like a redneck. That's what I sound like, and you immediately assume that <laughs> I just like I don't like I like white rice, but I don't like it to be wet. I mean, that's just that's just who I am. I even use a pressure cooker to cook my rice because I'm smart. It's all in one. You don't a rice cooker just cooks rice. A pressure cooker cooks rice and other things if you want to put it in there. What does a pressure cooker do with the rice? It's the same thing. It's just a rice cooker, but you can also do other stuff with it. You know, with a rice cooker, you got to cook rice, but it's not big enough. Pressure cooker, you can put other and stuff in there and make adobo if you want to and other stuff. Why is it called a pressure cooker? Because it uses heat and pressure to, to contain heat. Okay, so it's not like literally putting pressure on the food? Well, I mean, you're putting the heat. It heats it up, and then yeah. it's pressurized, so it's completely sealed. And then when this, you let the st- steam stays in there, and then when you open it, steam comes out, and it leaves the pressure in there. Okay. Right now, you look like a salesman. Yeah. Because <laughs> they always, you know, they always got for those salesmen. Five right? ninety nine. You can get your favorite pressure cooker for only five ninety nine. Yeah, but you got that voice that people trust, though. You know, because you're like soft spoken. Yeah, soft spoken southern. Southern, yeah. right? If you were a loud southerner, I'd be like, "This guy's trying to take advantage of me." But you're just like, "Look, this could help you and your family." <laughs> Listen, this is why you need volcano insurance. There's not a lot of volcanoes, but what if there is one? I mean, who's who's covered? It's going to be you and your family. And your family. Hey, you know how like people always imitate when they meet somebody from the UK, like an Englishman? Yeah. They do. You, is that the same thing where they imitate them? Their Every, accent. They everyone does it. You. Everyone does that when they meet me. Every when they time. talk to me. Even like people after shows, they're like, "Oh my god, you were so funny." I'm like, "Oh my god, that wasn't how you talked before the show." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know why you're doing that. <laughs> Just but like Southern people are the are like one of the only accents that you can make fun of, and people you can make fun of, and no one gives a shit about. No one ever cares that you make southern, fun of Southern people. That's so true. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Fine, because it's funny. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. I don't care. Does any southern person do most not give a fuck? I don't. I've never met a southern person that's ever made gotten made fun of that's ever cared about it. But you know, I don't live in the south anymore. I live here in yeah. California. California. Do you miss the south? I mean, I miss the food. I miss going into a Waffle House and fearing for my life. That's always a good, fun time. Why? Well, because everybody has guns, huh? Well, I mean, it's just if you have you ever been to a Waffle House. I think I went to one in Georgia, but I can't remember. It's space. One time. It's like you can see you can see everyone cooking. You can see the waitresses. They're just right there behind the counter. And I don't know what it is, but if you go to a Waffle House and don't see a fight, I don't think you had a good experience. I've always every time I've been, there's been a fight there between like the cook or someone else that just came in and they just start fighting each other. It's amazing. I took my wife to one in North Carolina when we were visiting my family, and we went in there and there was like two pre like two like fathers like preachers. And it was like 1130 at night. They were just eating there and two guys in camo and then just two, like three big guys in like, like, I don't know, like plaid shirts. And my wife's like, I feel like this is about to be a hate crime. And I was like, <laughs> well, it probably will be. So maybe you shut up and eat your pick, your, you know, your eggs. All right. So it's just fought? No, like I saw the waitress, like somebody came in after and they were screaming at the waitress and then the cook jumped across the counter and started beating him. Wow. I didn't even know what it was about, but I was like, I, I hope I like, still get my food in time. <laughs> just wait, wait, is it? It's open twenty four seven, right? Yeah. Oh, you know, I did go because I used to date somebody from Georgia, and she would tell me, and we got like a like some kind of hash, some whatever food hash browns, some kind of hash brown, or and like a like a hash brown plate, something like that, like yeah. a hash brown bowl. And then she says, "There's fights there all the time." Yeah. So that's like a Waffle House thing. Well, I mean, you can get dr- like everyone's drunk and then, you know, everything else in the South closes at like 11, like 930, maybe 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And by that time you're like, you're everyone's hammered as hell. So they're like, let's go to the Waffle House. Let's take my day out on Waffle House. <laughs> you like it better than Denny's? I haven't, God, I haven't been to Denny's. I used to go to Denny's all the time and I would never get like breakfast. I would get burgers. Because I'm weird. I know. You know what? I get the burger there too. The uh, um, Slam Burger, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's my jam. It used to be my jam. I haven't gone there like three or four years. Same thing with Golden Corral. I haven't been there in like three or four years. Why did you stop, man? 
Cuz, I need to watch my weight. Oh, I'm like, sorry. Die. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I was like, dude, you're fucking betraying the culture, aren't you? <laughs> well, the culture just killed me. <laughs> just, well, like, I, when I went to uh, the like the doctor, I was like, when I was working for Dish Network, I'd work four days a week and then be off three, and I would go to Golden Crow once, like, maybe twice a week, my days off, so I could recover, you know, because I need that day to recover from Golden Crow. And, like, I got my a- A1C, and it was like, like if for a pre-diabetic, it's 5.7. And I was at like 5.4, 5.5. Oh, Stopped going to Golden Crow entirely. It went down like 4.8. Are you serious? Yeah, it went down like significantly. Stopped drinking soda. It went down like 4.3 now. Wow. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Thanks, Golden Crow. <laughs> Thanks. Like, what was it? Uh, Jeff, who's it? Jeff Foxworthy. Jeff Foxworthy and Larry the Cable Guy. They do that like probably psycho OTC for Larry the Cable Guy and then Jeff Foxworthy does Golden Crow. Yeah. And probably psycho OTC is for Heartburn, which is what you get when you go to Golden Crow. That's a teamwork job right there. Okay. That's the blue collar comedy tour right That's there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it was like, I hate, I don't like Larry the Cable Guy, if I'm going to be honest, because I used to install cable and I have a Southern accent and I'm a stand-up comedian and he does, he has no act. He doesn't he's, have, a, he fakes it. Yeah. He fakes his accent. He's from yeah. like, Miss, like Mrs. or Missouri or something. He's something for, I've heard him talk without his accent. It's, yeah. it's completely night and day different. He probably doesn't even like, like Southern stuff. He's just like, well, I mean, they'll get me laughs. Get well, her done. It, made, it made me rich. Yeah. It made me rich. Hey, I got to ask this though, man. Um, what? Cause I noticed that uh, Southern people, man, I broke. I had a, right into the mic. A lot of chicken. Yeah, and I smelled it. Dude, it bounced off the microphone right into my nostrils. I'm like, damn, that, that's delicious uh, garlic salt. So there's people from the South that yeah. sound like you or I was going to say worse, but that sounds bad because that sounds like I'm, you know, not no. worse, but, but you know, like stronger accent. Yeah, I know what you mean. Versus people from the South that talk like, oh, yes, of course. You know, like, right? There, There's that. Why? Yeah. Well, I mean, how? Like, I can do that if I need to. I can hide my accent if I want to. I Are you saying they're hiding it then? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you can still be raised, and it just depends on your environment and your household. I, I went mm. to uh, a cotillion kind of thing where they they taught us how to speak correctly and speak without our accents. <laughs> not, even, not even kidding. They what? taught they taught us uh, how to our etiquette. They taught us manners every day after school. And they, Wait, is it like the shit where like they put the books on the head that you see in the movies? Yeah. Like that's is that real? Yeah, I went to it when I was when I was like uh, I think. Uh, twelve to thir- to fourteen. Yeah. yeah. Why do they make make you guys do that? It's to make we're like better citizens, like better like people of society. I mean, now I can speak clearly without an accent if I need to. So you're saying your accent was stronger before? I, I mean, it sounds like this is how I usually talk, you know, without yeah. my with my accent, but I can hide it if I need to. Hide it right now. I am right now. This is me hiding it. If this is how I when I'm at calls, like if I'm if I'm doing stuff at work, I usually hide my accent completely. Now don't hide it. Well, this is how I talk with that my accent. With my accent, it's they, it's Damn. really trippy. Yeah, they really yeah. they make us do that. They taught us how to speak correctly, how to manners, what forks to use, all that all that weird stuff. That or how to dance. They taught us how to dance too. Yeah. Do they still do that? Yeah, they still do that. So yeah. this isn't some like TV movie bullshit. This no, that, is like yeah, real. It was real. Yeah. I thought it was. You thought it was TV fantasy. I yeah. It was, I know everyone says it. Yeah, it's real. Yeah, they make us do that when we were kids. Wow. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say something about Honey Boo Boo, but I don't know if Honey Boo Boo. This is like I'm just like, wait, what? And this is some. I mean, next you're gonna tell me the Office is real. <laughs> do you th- do you think that's why a lot of uh, I haven't met like a shit I haven't met a shit ton of Southerners, but I feel like there's there there's the whole you know Southern hospitality. Southern people are no are known for like being at least like nice to your face just yeah. like the way they talk yeah do you think that has to do with the what is it called con- con- the what the, the school you cotillion? went to cotillion yeah do you con- think it's because of cotillion i mean not just that but you know like if i was raised to say yes ma'am no ma'am yes sir no sir i was told mm. to speak with respect and when people hear that from me they think i was in the army or in the air force or something but uh, you know i'm just that's just how i was raised i'm very polite you know very soft-spoken when you know unless i'm hyped up then i get pretty loud but usually on stage but outside that pretty soft-spoken and quiet yeah yeah it's weird yeah yeah most people when they see me off, off stage when they see me on stage like <laughs> dr jekyll mr hyde kind of thing on stage exuberance of confidence like a lot of energy just brashness but off stage quiet soft-spoken usually but still with confidence yeah yeah 
Yeah, but, you don't have to be loud to be confident. You know, yeah. people. I think a lot of people misconstrue. Oh, that guy's so loud. He's so confident. It's like, yeah. dude, sometimes the loudest people are the most not confident, unconfident. On the inside, yeah. Yeah. yeah they have that, we got that mentality of boastfulness and loudness. It's like, oh, he's pretty confident. And the inside's like, oh my God, everything's crashing down around me. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> I love how the first part of this, this, this has been like an interview for Southern people. Like, I've met a lot of Southern people. <laughs> So what do you guys eat? <laughs> do you guys still drink water? Or you just, it's <laughs> imagine, or? imagine if we like re- re- reverse the roles. How racist that would seem. <laughs> right? How fucked what up would it be? What kind of Asian are you? Yeah, yeah. Wait, so so you? <laughs> why do you eat rice? <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Do y'all have to eat rice with every meal? Like your burgers too? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, how do you say so skinny? My doctor told me too much rice is bad for your heart. <laughs> Glu- glucose levels. Hey, Glu- glucose <laughs> levels. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. Just like, man, I, I thought you all looked alike, but I guess you don't. That's weird. I just have a fascination <laughs> with like the Southern accent, man. And like, because like, like I said, I haven't met a lot of Southerners or at least, at least like um, conversed with them. Yeah. Just because there's not a lot that you bump into. Yeah, right? especially Even, in California. Yeah, especially in California. So... There's this whole fascination for me. So, like, I I have to clear up a lot of these questions I, that I didn't even know I had until you sat in front of me. Yeah. You know? If we reverse these roles, it'd be, like, the most racist It podcast. would be very, very <laughs> fucking racist. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> hey, can we, um, can we do, like, a few minutes where I, we have, we talk, like, just how we're talking, but I talk to you with a southern accent you want to you see this is the great part about this is because if we reverse like can i talk to you the nation accent <laughs> it'd be fuck like everyone's would, like cancel him cancel <laughs> <laughs> just i would love that because i don't get fucked but like not, not you getting canceled but not a j- <laughs> yeah but you know how society is, so they're gonna be like stop asian hate and, and then and then they're gonna say you're racist and they're gonna say i'm a white pandering self-hating asian which uh, people have already called me that just because, like, I, I'll say something that has nothing to do with really, um, like, I'm not even like shitting on Asians or anything. But then they're like, "You, you're a white person. You're a white person." That's I don't know. I don't like. know why I gave the Asian person. You're a white person. You gave them a deep Southern accent and then said, "You're a white person." <laughs> so you're bringing that. You're bringing that out of me. So it how about from this lot. point on? Yeah. Oh yeah. If you, n- if you n- want to talk a Southern accent, go for it. It didn't bother me at all. All right. So. <laughs> When I drive and I do when I do DoorDash, I'll do randomly a southern accent to myself and I'll just talk I'll have, a, I'll have like a whole conversation to myself. Yeah. And I don't know why. But I'm letting you know I do it out of endearment, not you know. Southern accents are stupid. No, it's like you know, like I miss Dukes of Hazard. That's one of my favorite <laughs> shows. I don't know what you know what the the Confederate Army just got a big bad rap. I mean, they're a bunch of great people. They got racy paces, probably. I don't know. Yeah, and, and, and what, what what was so wrong with slavery? Isn't it not any different than 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 Mexicans working at the restaurants now? Is it that different? Because they really help the community, don't they? Oh my God! I've uh, the, the Asian whole... people working at the laundromats, like. Who's gonna want to do? I don't want to do that, <laughs> honey. Do you want to do that? No, I don't want. That's right. That's what I'm saying, man. You know what was really messed up? I was what? thinking about buying a laundromat, like just as extra extra income, because it's really not that expensive in the South. You can get like a. Actually, we saw an apartment complex where I used to live. It was only like hundred thousand dollars. Had like maybe twenty, thirty apartments in it. We were thinking about buying it. Just wait, wait, wait. A hundred k. Yeah. For thirty to forty units. Yeah, which is about. It's like a little like. Around the corner, like uh, intersection kind of place, and it looked pretty good. Dude, why so cheap? Sanford, North Carolina, really cheap. Uh, it's cheap to live there. We've my mother's like my mother's uh, first house when I was grew up, and we got it for like maybe hundred grand. It was like a three bedroom, three bedroom, two bath, and had like a acre of land on it. Wow. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. That's <clears throat> it's. You know, we were thinking about like, you know, positive, you know, passive income, you know, just ways we can make passive income when we're not working or if we want to go on trips, we can still make income coming in. Mm. Yeah. Income. Yeah. <laughs> See, so, I mean, I mean, I could say the smartest, most like, <coughs> like money thing and you're just like, income. <laughs> I know. I'm literally the racist white person in this fucking thing. You're minding your own business. And I'm like, I'm like, hey. Hey, let's do a talk. 
You gotta fortify your portfolio and not use NFTs because you're not really safe. <laughs> they're not good. But if you invest in something that gives you money while you work on it, it's passive income. He's like, <laughs> he say income weird. See, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Ah, he, he went to jail. Yep. <laughs> he went to jail. <laughs> he went to jail. What? I didn't, he, he didn't say that. Um, the nucleus is really the powerhouse <laughs> of the cell. Someday I would like to be a president, too, of the nation. Can I do that, Mom? I literally do that to myself. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It's like, like I'm talk. I'm, I'll be like the mother, the son, the father. Fucking, I was about to say Holy Spirit, but you know what? <laughs> I'll be everything in I'm my car. Jesus Christ! And I'm just not even like, oh, this is funny. I'm just like, just okay. Where do I gotta drop this order off to? Okay, uh, this address. All right, man. Why do people have to say crazy things sometimes? Because I just walk around looking for reasons for the 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 uh, paintings. To be sold, and I don't really know why, but they do it. And then I like, how does it, how do you sound like, like a mild Forrest Gump? Well, you, is you, is that what the accent you're trying to go for? <laughs> no, like I'll 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 do that, and then I'll do the thing where I'll start like this. I'll start like, so there's a, look, look, man, you can't just give up on life, right? And then I'll do like, then as I'm doing it, my mouth gets kind of like white, like you know what, right? What you know? And sometimes I'll go around and. Look, here's the thing about Asian people, all right? There they, it is. they do crazy things, you know, like, you know, and I'll do that. But you know, like, I try to get the you know, no. right? You know. <laughs> or if you want to get a good Southern accent, just, I always tell people, just start a sentence and don't care how long it takes for you to finish it. <laughs> that's Okay, that's Southern? That's Southern. Like, yeah, I went to the store the <laughs> other day. That's Southern. That's <laughs> You just you just taking your time. You ain't got nothing to do. You ain't going nowhere. So finish that sentence whenever you get to it. See right there, I felt like I had to I had to finish it to prove to you that I do it with confidence. <laughs> but okay, can I do it again? <laughs> okay. This is probably gonna be the most annoying fucking thing. <laughs> I come to my house for a podcast. Ninety percent. You are not what? Okay. All right. There it is. Okay, ready. Mm-hmm. So take my time. Like I have nowhere to go. And I don't care if I finish my sentence. <laughs> yeah, just, just take your time. Just You're not in a hurry to finish it. Okay. I mean, I could eat right now, but I guess I don't have to. That's good, but you also sound like you're doing a sex line for some reason. <laughs> I like to. Thanks for your chicken. I love it. But like, like there's overemphasis oh, in a lot of like syllables and... Like uh, so, I went to the store the other day. Yeah, other, other day, other. Okay. I went to the store the other day. Other, other, other. Yeah, it's a lot of jaw work. Oh, other day. See, there you go. And I wasn't sure if there was gonna be a water bottle on the table, so I looked to the ma- <laughs> manager and I said, "Hey, this is the only Walmart without." A water bottle on the table. If it's not, look, I grew up with Arrowhead. <laughs> like how you're looking off to the side too. Like you're just looking at a Peyton. You look. Are you looking at Korean words, or are you looking at the painting full of like? Flowers? I literally looked in between all of that at the nothing of the wall. Okay. And I started spacing out, and I got really into it. Could you tell? Could you feel it? I was like, why are you drinking water bottles from Walmart? But see, like, I really felt like I had nowhere to go. <laughs> that sentence didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah. I feel like I aged like 50 more years. You know how old people just say a bunch of shit that nobody cares about, but they, but they, but they need somebody to talk to because their, their fucking family doesn't care about them. <laughs> Saddest they went Am from, I wrong though? It went from like aggressive southern <laughs> speak to like, man, I hate old people. They just talk and talk and talk and talk. But they're so enthusiastic about it. Yeah, because no one ever talks to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I call my grandpa all the time just to see how he's doing once what, a week. Every, what does he talk about? He just talks about his week, to see how he's doing. Just yeah. want to check on him, see what he's like. It's always the same thing. You just, you know, grandson, I was just going, I've just been working, just been, uh, you know, working outside, taking care of the lawn, everything. So, okay, that sounds great, Grandpa. Two, 20 minutes out of my day, every day, every Monday at 1230. I think that's great. That's something that 
everybody should do just like talking to the grandparents yeah see how they're doing you know yeah. try to ignore the crazy shit you know stuff that you don't want to hear about or like you know talking to my dad and I'm like hey dad did you get your vaccine yeah he's like oh vaccines for done <laughs> oh and he goes down a rabbit hole of like Ye-. yeah 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 dad's a really devout christian man okay so would he be the epitome of like southern no, I mean, I, not him. He's he's actually quite progressive for most Southern people that I know in the South. I mean, well, uh, there's a lot of stereotypes about Southern people from like, but where I was from, it basically all the ter- stereotypes are true. Just complete ignorant people that you know didn't want to open up a book and just wanted to stay these stereotypes, mm. just almost li- legit illiter- illiteracy and just pandering to just the stereotypes of just being dumb all the time. I'm happy I left the South, you know, because I, I was able to explore the world and see that the world's a much bigger place than just Sanford, North Carolina. Wow. And if you're watching this and you're from Sanford, North Carolina, I, I don't care. I I love you. I'm, I'll miss you. Uh, and go Yellow Jackets. I guess I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the Yellow Jackets. I think that's our our. I was our uh, our school mascot was the Yellow Jackets. Wow, it's been so long. Yeah, you, you left behind. I don't even remember the mascot now. What's the mascot? I don't fucking care. I think well, the, when I went to my last year of high school, I went to school in uh, Michigan, and my, we were the Muskrats. Yeah, Yellow Jackets is better. Yeah, yeah, Muskrats just sounds dirty. People, and it's funny because in this, like, in that little town, they hate they hated Muskrats. I was like, why'd you guys make that your school mascot? You guys actively go out to shoot them because they mess up your yards. And we're like, I don't know, go Muskrats. <laughs> That's weird. I've I've actually met more like in crazy intolerant people in Michigan than I met in North Carolina. Like I saw people driving with like the rebel flag on the back of their truck in like Detroit, which didn't make any sense to me at all. What Detroit is known for, uh, is that where Eminem's from? Yeah. Okay. Eminem's from Detroit. Yeah. Eight mile. Remember that movie? Eight mile, that's right. So you, you would see people having the flags, rebel, rebel flag. Flags yeah. And- it's weird. Well, I don't know why. I don't have any time for that. That's bull. That's just crazy. I mean, man, I don't, I don't need any of that stuff. I mean, that's that's. I mean, that's whatever they want to believe. But honestly, that's just wrong to me. You know. But you know, I've ever since I left North Carolina, I moved out here to California too. It's just been a smorgasbord of like other cultures. Mm. Love it. Had you know Korean barbecue. Which is awesome. Yeah, watching anime. You watch anime. <laughs> Love anime. Which is what bonded us. <clears throat> yep. And also telling you that I turned. I didn't know that Bonchan was. I was supposed to get that. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't order this. <laughs> <laughs> that means a side dishes, a side dish in, in Korean when he's what, Bonchan. That's what he's saying. But like uh, Korean barbecues are just just whatever, you know. Yeah, they put they put it in front of me like it had you know rice paper. It had all the good stuff in there. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't order this. <laughs> 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 My wife was, was like, that was our first date. My wife's like, Oh, no, no, it comes with it. I was like, Do they got pictures of the food cooked? I don't, why is it all uncooked food on the menu? They're like, Oh, we cook it. I was like, Oh, why do we got to cook it? Aren't we at a restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> don't we pay them <laughs> to, to cook, cook it, it for I us? Like, I was like, well, Why are we cooking? I don't know if this is supposed to be cooked. I don't want to eat like, I don't want to cook it wrong because I like, she likes it like burnt, like, like she likes the bulgogi. Burnt. I like it kind of like tender. I like it yeah. when it's not burnt all the way. And I was just like, I don't, I don't like. It. I was just sitting on there, like just watching it the whole time, just dipping it in this, like the, you know, the sesame oil. I was like, oh, is this okay? I don't know. If this was, and then it was like, oh, this is amazing. Love it. Never went back. I cook Korean barbecue at my house all the time. Sesame oil with the salt's my favorite dip. <clears throat> oh yeah, she does the salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic in it too. Damn, she goes in. Well, she's Filipino. Yeah, Filipino is fucking. When they eat, they like they they know what they want to eat, and then they make it taste all extra flavorful and stuff. Yeah, Filipinos love Korean barbecue. The Filipinos I know love Korean barbecue even more than Koreans. Oh yeah, like, was, they go her state. in, yeah. man. Yeah, my wife loves Korean. I love Korean barbecue just because of her. Yeah, and then like uh, then we cook a lot of like Filipino dishes like kare kare. Or you know, like Dude, a, I love kare kare. oh yeah, my wife made some. She, yeah, she does. Yeah, she made some before she left, and she's uh, she ate some of it, and I have some at my house too. It takes like a good day to get it good. You know, you gotta get that tripe, you got the oxtail, you gotta make sure it's nice and tender. That's what you also use that pressure cooker for, a slow cooker. You gotta pressure cook that, and then put it in a slow cooker so it gets nice and tender. 
So you put the meat in the pressure cooker? Yeah. For, and then that tenderizes it? Yeah, it's a good tenderizer, yeah. But, okay, so here's the thing that caught my attention. You said for your first date. Yeah. You went to Korean barbecue, but that was your first time, so that tells me she chose the spot. Yeah. Correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. How did that happen, though? Like, how did she... You know what I mean? Because you ask her out, and then she's like, hey, we should go here. So... Yeah, that was exactly what it was. Like, I texted her. I was like, "Hey, I'd love to take you out sometime." And she's like, "Okay." I was like, "We, where do you want to go? Any place? Oh, well, let's go to your favorite place because I wanted to understand what like her favorite place was, and that was her favorite place at the time. It's a place that stayed open until like two in the morning. Nice cream place. So it was like like Saturday. It was Friday, Friday around like seven o'clock. We met up, and then it was just like I was there like maybe thirty five minutes early. So I was just sitting there by myself, and I was just looking at the menu like I do not. <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about it. So I was like, uh. I was like, do they have fries here? <laughs> I, was, I was just like, oh, okay. I mean, I, I'll, let's, let's do this. And she she showed up, and then that's when they put all the, you know, like the bonch on the table and everything. I was like, okay, what's that? I was like pointing at everything, like, what's that? What's that? And she's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, that's bulgogi. So it's going to be like, it's really tender. It's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. What do I dip it in? <laughs> like, she's showing me all this stuff. I'm like, this is amazing. Oh, my God. How do we, and I was thinking about back to the south. Like we don't have any of those places back where I'm from. On the east coast, you can get like French fries, garlic bread, and like a Mountain Dew with your Chinese food. I mean, you know, it's it's really it's, yeah. I got I got I used to get like kung pao chicken with rice and like French fries and garlic bread for like lunch. That's like Italian American and yeah and Chinese I know. yeah. And I was like, this is. And in my head, I was like, well, this is pretty authentic. <laughs> you know I, mean? I was like, now in the back, I'm thinking about it, like, that's not authentic at all. Why would I? Why would, garlic bread's not from China. I'm like, that's, but it's delicious, you know? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be against it. I love right, French that's fries. Exactly. I would, <laughs> garlic bread, French fries, and Chinese. Dude, I'll, I'll do it, man. I don't care. And that's why I've also realized that is the ones that, the, the best Asian restaurants are the ones that are like holes in the walls. Yeah, like, yeah. where you got to go down into like, like those steps and it's like open up someone's basement house and it's like, got like 18 things on the menu and like three of them they don't have anymore they're like crossed out with like tape <laughs> like oh that's gonna be amazing i i even make a i made a egg drop soup for myself you made it yeah for myself yeah Shit, man. like last yesterday for who for me oh for you yeah <laughs> what <laughs> i'm like who would you make it for yourself what? yourself <laughs> Because I like the same. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, egg, egg drop soup is it? Is it hard to make? It, for? <laughs> it takes like ten minutes to make. Oh really? Yeah. Shit, in my mind, I'm just you know why? Because like every time I hear egg drop soup, I keep thinking about the the delicacy that China has, where you have to. It's like made out of bird spit. Like you have to find it, and you, you have to go to like the mountains or a cliff or some shit, wherever these this specific type of bird like spits to make their nest, and you get the nest. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, I just, I, <laughs> I just used chicken stock and inside water. So maybe I will. I mean, it ain't authentic, but I tried. No, no, no. Those are two completely different things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's not made out of bird spit, you fucking up, man. You fucking up. <laughs> you know, it's like ten minutes. You gotta put like a uh, cornstarch in some water, and then you know, slowly drop the eggs in there after you beat them, and then you just, while you're stirring them, that's what you know dissipates it, and then you know doesn't cook the, overcook the eggs. What do you eat most of? What kind of cuisine? Uh, probably Korean. I like because I like Korean barbecue. I make spicy pork for myself when I'm at home a lot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, spicy pork belly. Yep. <laughs> Fucking shit, man. I feel like I'm a racist. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I'm like. What's your favorite thing to make? I like Korean barbecue. Man. No, no, no. I, like I me, pork. me. And you're just like, I, I can just imagine what you're thinking, like. Is this white boy making fucking Korean food? The fuck? No, no, no. It's, 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 it's just because like, like, I I could hear you talk all fucking day because you have, you have, I want to hear you narrate a fucking audio book and I would buy that shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm not being dead serious. That's all. Thanks. Yeah. So now like I'm having this whole moment of where is this coming from? Why is the fascination for the southern accent, why is it so powerful within me? If you get attract, you're attracted to things that you don't see regularly, things that are like are that are are new to you. You like to engage in and then learn more about, so you ha- so you can you know quench your curiosity. Novelty, yeah, you're right about that. You're right. You're right. You know, what I, you know what I realized too from this conversation is, you know, the whole beginning 
uh, was just me going off about evening Southern, right? <laughs> yes. With like this ridiculous amount of, I realized, vigor and energy. Yeah. Like, wow, where is this fucking coming from? L- looking at my energy now. Yeah. And I realized I just had to get it out without even realizing that's something to get out. You yeah. know? Like when you meet somebody, like when I met people who didn't really know many Asians and they're like making jokes because they think they're connecting with me. They're not trying to be racist, but they're like, yeah, you eat sushi. <laughs> I love sushi. It's good. It's good. Hey. Hey, you sing karaoke, right? Like that? Uh, that bl- that you know, in- unintentional ignorance? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they like, if you just let it go, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I do, I do. And then they just kind of, it, it gets out because they never really inter- interacted with an Asian person before. And, and then they just kind of like, yeah, it's good weather, huh? It's a good day. It's a good day. It just goes, you know what I mean? I think it's all kind of within all of us for yeah. like the novelty of talking to specific groups of people. No, I, you know, yeah, yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was raised in the South, man. I, I like my wife was the first Filipino person I ever met, and I was like, I was asking those stupid questions, and then I think she was like, "Oh," I was like, "Oh," I'm thinking what I'm saying is kind of fucked up. I was like, "Why would I ask that?" She's just a person. She's a normal person. Why? Would, and then, you know, then I, you know, then I learned more about it. Like I'm even learning Tagalog now. I'm learning like a uh, Filipino language, so I can when we have kids, we can uh, they're bilingual. Or do you use Pimsleur? Dot com? Are you using that? No, I'm just, uh, just using some regular some app from uh, a college in uh, the Philippines. It's it, for it it's look, free. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was using that and like uh, just you know like salama and you know, thank you and all that mm-hmm. and like uh, you know, I'll say like we'll interchange English and Tagalog. So whenever I say I have a lover, like mahakita to her. Damn, know? that's fucking adorable, man. Mahakita. Yeah. Kamusta lang pare? Yeah. <laughs> Kamusta. <laughs> it's I love it. Tagalog. It's just it's it's such like a, a, a nice language where it's like it bounces a lot. You know, a lot of the like the back of the throat bouncing between each syllable and everything. Mm-hmm. And I love I love that about that language. You know, I even I tried you know some Japanese. I tried uh, like because I have friends that are from uh, they're from Taiwan. I try to learn a little Taiwanese just so I can be you know a more cultural. You can know, you say open. one to three words for each one, Japanese and Taiwanese? Let's see. Uh, Konnichiwa is mm. you know hello Japanese. Uh, I know like Ichi ni san shi go roku, and then that's I think that's, that's right. What about Taiwanese? Uh, uh, or Chinese or Korean? Just something else. Uh, Korean. Oh God, I just I got I love how I'm blanking on that too. I I know that for thank for thank you in Korean because I wanted to say thank you. Uh, oh, it's it's uh kam sida or so close. It's, you're missing like one little part on like the, the third quarter of it. It was just tiny bit. Come so see that. Oh, God, is it? The first one was right. Come see But it was missing one. Come some need that. Come see that. Come some. Like the um, um yeah. part. At, you forgot the come. You did, you did come, but you've got the sam. Um. Oh, so sam the sam. Yeah. Sam see that. Sam ni. Sam ni da. Yeah, sam ni da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah man. I'm impressed, dude. It's, it's like I try to learn like other language, but it's hard to hide my accent when I'm trying to like speak another language. So yeah, it just that's like, why I was trying not to laugh. But it was a, super adorable. It was fucking endearing as shit. So anybody that hears it, it's like, wow. Like they would they would fuck with you for that. They 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 would appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unlike Galen, because like you know, I took Galen. We took him to a Korean barbecue for for the first time, and like man, he doesn't have a southern accent, but he sounded like oh my, I was like, he was like, it, eh, what. Ew, what's that? What's this? Ew. I'm like, that's that's the meat. Why? Why would you get you that? I'm. Ch- you gotta be open minded. Yeah. I mean, I I'm from like I eat I've eaten gizzards, I've eaten pig feet, I've eaten all the, like the weirdest stuff in the south, and you know, if outside looking in, people are like, that's disgusting. But to me, it's just normal. I've had yeah. bullet. I've had you know, blood sausage. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, pig's feet. So have you had uh, crispy pata? What's that? Dog. <laughs> Ask your wife about that Filipino dish, crispy pata. Okay, that is uh, like pig knuckle, but it's got the crispy skin on it, mm. and then like the most tender meat. This is my favorite Filipino dish. Really, next to karakare and uh, lechon kawali, which is like the pork belly, oh, pork, yeah. pork, yeah. pork belly, whatever. Crispy pata. That is a f- is fucking delicious. Okay, oh, we'll see about making that. Yeah, then. yeah. You're not gonna remember. I will remember because it's pig knuckle. See, like that's. I mean, even when they told me, like they showed me a bullet, you know, like uh, that duck, that duck embryo. Like you just open it up and then you like, like take a shot of like duck embryo. Yeah. Like a Filipino, like a uh, dish, and I was like, 
I mean, this is, this is to me, it was blowing my mind. I was like, y'all eat this? And I was like, you know what? Let's try it. I love it. It's delicious. It's It was hard to get used to, but I, I mean, it tastes good. Did you have the one where, because I had the one where the, the duckling isn't really, it's supposed to be kind of formed where you could still see its body and eyes. Yeah, but it's not supposed to have one. any feathers. It's not supposed to have any feathers yet, yeah. from what I understand. But mine was even less evolved than that, where it just looked, like between it a regular egg and, and that, like barely, like it, like you could st- still kind of see the yolk, but the yolk was kind of formed. Then? Yeah, yeah, the yolk was kind of formed, but not the duckling. I want the the duckling where it's like kind of like a sleeping, like right. That's the one that you're supposed to have a little bit. Yeah. I think from what I what I know of, yeah. I want that. Yeah, it was that it was really good. I mean, we get like the like the thousand year old egg, at, uh, like a lot. It's like a it's like a, a market down right in the street from where we do, and that's pretty mm-hmm. good too. Uh, I gotta ask this man where. Where did you meet your wife then? If she's the first Filipino you met, Match.com. Okay, I hear, I hear those type of dating apps where it's more, um, like you like the consumer has to invest more time and effort into it. Like those are, I hear those are better than, like obviously ten, Tinder's a fucking hellhole. You know, all, all those other things. Like you're not gonna meet the quality person on Tinder. <laughs> I mean, it's a, the funny thing is like is they say these websites are like it's just all your intention when you meet someone. If you go on Tinder, most of the time your intention is just to meet up and hook up. You know, when people go to Match. dot com, they think the intention is that. But you can still hook up with people on Match. dot com and then you know just try to date people on Tinder. But True. For, for me, for when I'm I messaged my wife, uh, she had she did her thir- like a thirty day trial thing for like five dollars. And I, it was when I messaged her, it was like she had like two days left, so she just. She's like, wow. hey, here's my phone number. Uh, text me. And I was like, oh, cool. I had already bought the year, and I was like halfway through my first month. So I spent $120, and then I met my wife like two weeks later. Hey, but that's worth it. If you think about how much dating costs in general, like oh, just yeah. to go through all these people, you're spending you're, a lot of money just to be like be disappointed. Yeah. So and 120 like, yeah. is fucking nothing. Yeah. That's why I say to her all the time. I'm like, I'll get my money back. You know, yeah. it's just, just, <laughs> she's like, I spent five dollars. It was wasted on you. I was like, I love you too, baby. <laughs> really passive aggressive towards each other. That's what I love about her. She's, yeah, that's the, cult, the Filipino culture. They know how to like joke and take all that. Oh yeah, you know all that stuff. She's really good at that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Why are you white? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You're right. Like I'm sorry. Like the, if this this whole podcast was reversed. It'd be the most <laughs> racist. Most viewed pot like anything on TikTok, Instagram, people just be blowing oh, up. Just if any of these questions go back to you, like, so what's it like being, you know, Asian? Is it, <laughs> is it weird? Like, is when it you, weird? When you tried your first burger, were you like, what is this? Like, <laughs> yeah. I would want to be on a podcast where it's satire the whole episode, <laughs> and I would want to be that person. Just I would, I would play. Normally, I play the uh, the like the weird person, the, yeah. the, the non-straight person, but I would play the straight, the straight man. Yeah. To be like, well, I mean, it, yeah, it, it is, you know. But the one who's just really just easy going and doesn't see it as anything weird, just <laughs> answering the questions. Well, yeah, like, you know, the first time I had a burger, it did, it did kind of blow my mind. And I was like, why do I have to eat rice every day? <laughs> why? You know, you're supposed to eat burgers with your hand and not with chopsticks? What the hell? Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> just like, my, my fingers were hurting. I, I, I ate burgers with chopsticks for. 10 years until somebody told me one of my friends said you don't have to do that <laughs> and I was like what I I hope they clip this and they make this most like ignorant clips I've ever heard <laughs> yeah I tried a burger and I was like what the fuck is this stuff <laughs> It's weird. What's Carl's Jr.? Why is it a star with a face on it? Is it supposed to have a face on the star? <laughs> is it supposed to make me feel like I'm going shooting for the moon? Hey, by the way, so I did have a one Southerner before you on here, and I made a clip, and then I had him say two different things. One, one, the, the I, okay, I made him say the same exact sentence. Okay. But with the, the Southern accent, and then just, the typical American accent, right? Okay. I made him say, see, the thing about Asians is... Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I even make a joke about that, too. I, I tell people, like, if you ever feel weird about what you're about to say, say it in my accent. If you still <laughs> feel weird, you probably shouldn't say it. If you feel like it's okay, you probably shouldn't say it because you're thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like, if you're yeah. you're getting to territory where, like, is this okay to say for, to someone else? Just say it in my accent. Odds are, you're probably not supposed to say it. 
that's how you know. And you know what's funny? I took that clip and I posted it on TikTok and it hit like million plus. And I can't tell you how many, uh, well, a lot of people found it funny, but there was also more than anything, I think like thousands of Southerners that got mad. Like, that's racist. <laughs> Like we're not all like that. You're making us look bad. But all he said was, "Just it was like, hey, say it." Okay, now they say, "See, the thing about Asians is, okay, good, you said it. Now say it in a Southern accent." See, the thing about Asians is, and then, but he said it a little like harsher too. And I get that, yeah. but it's a joke. We're, we're fucking around, yeah. And they're like, "See, the, the first one he said it called me. The second one he said it. He, he did it on purpose. You're trying to make us look bad." <laughs> The goddamn thing about it, you know, that's yeah. the, it's just the, the way you say it. it the, ac- the accent sounds more aggressive at one point. But the, the thing is, the sentence sounds aggressive. The it's thing so about Asians is, like, yeah. that's why I always do that Gar- Gomer Pyle kind of like accent, because it's most disarming, most like it's very Southern, but also re- it's over the top, like comedic. Like, have you ever seen Gomer Pyle? That was the Andy Griffin show back in like the 50s. I mean, I, I saw a little bit when I was a kid, but I don't remember anything from that. Yeah, I just had this guy that was like, Hey, Andy, are you coming down to the store tomorrow? We go. I'm about to go out to the war. Like, Wait, wait, how old was he in the... In the like uh, he was like, he's maybe like 20s in that show. Was but, he like the dummy, like the main dummy guy? Yeah. Okay, I think I remember. Oh, no, that was uh, that was uh, Don Knotts. The, Gomer Powell was like... Okay, well, well, I know Don Knotts. Yeah, yeah Gomer yeah. Powell was the guy that was like in charge of the gas station, and then he had his own show, the Gomer Powell show, when he oh, went off he? to like war, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. I know, like that's that's what I grew up on. I grew up on a little house on the play, prairie, because that's what... I could watch. <laughs> we yeah. didn't have. We had like three channels when I was growing up. Did you like it? I mean, not really. I mean, what am I going <laughs> to relate to? Like, to watch, yeah, right? just, well, yeah, my, my sister would make me watch Sailor Moon and then Blue's Clues, and it was the most horror. For, she was like, she's older than I am. I don't even know why she was watching that, but here we are. Okay, so she introduced you without you even realizing it to anime, but yeah. that's not your main choice of anime because it's just a bunch of like girls changing i liked sailor moon for the longest time well, i did too i did too. well I, I wasn't sure if you would like it. i thought you were gonna say you didn't but i liked it and i had a crush on uh the blue one the, with the short hair the bob mercury i think was it mercury or saturn i don't fucking know what the fuck the blue one with yeah the, blue hair yeah i had a crush on her man. Uh, you know the funny thing is like I, lo- I have a little meme where it's like can you pick out the main characters and it's like re- brown hair brown hair brown hair purple <laughs> Yeah, I used I used to love Sailor Moon because it was like it was like the friendship. I was like the first introduction of like the plot, the major plot hole of anime was like, well, friendship is the the strongest thing ever. I know, right? It's such, it just makes so much doesn't make any sense. Where like some the main protagon, the, the main antagonist gets like this god level power. He's just he's so strong, and he was like the general of an army. And then just two minutes later, these teenagers are like, well, we're gonna use friendship. And he's like, no. Oh, I was like, this is horse shit. <laughs> he did that shit. But, uh, every, uh, but you know, look, wait, the first bit, nice, good anime that I got introduced that I really watched was Outlaw Star. That was yes, a, Outlaw Star with the guns. Yeah. And, right? Yeah, yeah. Caster yeah. shells, hell yeah. That was Adult Swim back in the like the heyday. I had a crush on that that girl. Which one? The black hair girl that was uh, the one that is like a weapon or whatever. You crushed hard on all like, a lot of anime girls, didn't you? I did. Yeah, it's okay. I did. You know, it's okay. Girls didn't talk to me when I was a little kid, but I always had a crush on the ones that was like the soft energy, you know, extremely feminine energy, just like, just, uh, kind of, you know, like, cause seeing them start to get more in touch with their emotion or like for the Allah star girl. Oh yeah. Right. You know, she becomes more human. And then I'm like, fuck, I would treat you so good. I would, I, would you, I would treat you so good, baby. Yeah. If you weren't just <laughs> pencil lines, I swear to God, you'd be taken care of in my nice little house. I promise you know, I'll get you rice. I'll never take care of you. <laughs> just, I won't make you eat a hamburger with chopsticks. Because <laughs> that just, leads to rheumatoid arthritis. That's really bad. Just, really bad. It takes so long. Just uh, It's so <laughs> heavy. Like You had to chop it up. I actually never did that, but I feel like you could do it with a, with a McDonald's cheeseburger, like the cheapest one. You think so? Because it's small. I know, but you still have to, you put in a lot, the chopsticks use almost all wrist action. Yeah, I, I have a way to hold a chopstick where I can pick up heavy stuff, uh, and it looks really ugly, and it's not. Are you, you're closer down the... the sh- well, there's truth in that. I would go a little bit closer, but more like, I can't even explain it, but I don't even hold chopsticks correctly to begin with, um, but it doesn't matter. But real quick, though. 
before I forget, I just realized I had this fascination with like inanimate, not real woman. Like, <laughs> do you remember that movie? It was an American movie where there was like a bunch of woman robots, and then one of them <laughs> gets what? well. They were like 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 uh, like like servant robots, but then one of them, I guess, like change of programming, and this guy ends up falling in love with her on this journey, and then she like breaks at the end, and he's like heartbroken. What I had a. What movie are you talking about? I don't remember the name. That's the most specific storyline I've ever heard. And I can't. I have no there, idea. There's a not. um. Okay, let me look it up real quick. Oh, shit. Real quick, real quick, because I have to. I, every time I bring this shit up, which is not a lot. <laughs> movie all with, with your with southern <laughs> woman robot. <laughs> movie with woman robot. Pornhub.com. Pornhub.com. Actually, I like watching. No, no, nope. not Metropolis. Uh, fuck. I was thinking like maybe Ghost in the Shell. That was that's no no no. I'm talking like an American movie, like an American older one from movie? like the eighties, literally from the eighties. What? Oh man, there it. I, did, I had a fucking like. I fantasized about that when I was a kid. I was like a little kid, and I just wanted to. I mean, you fantasize about the things that you get you're introduced to. I mean, uh, like a uh, no, but I'm seeing a theme here while I'm talking to you. Was it always like, like the theme is mechanical women. <laughs> there aren't well, real. no, like anime, anime robot, game. just things that are not achievable. Did you grow up watching anime? Yeah, but I didn't know. I didn't know it was anime at first. You just thought it was cartoons. Yeah, I just thought it was. Cartoons. I mean, that's all it is. It's just Japanese cartoons. You know what, man? I can't find it right now. But <laughs> oh, is it Cherry uh, Cherry Two Thousand? Is this it? Cherry Two Thousand. That sounds really so. Is <laughs> okay. This might be it. I don't think it's it, but okay. It's not it, but it's kind of similar. I'll just read you the. When Sam Treadwell's David Andrews, the real actor name, Cherry Two Thousand gynoid wife malfunctions during sex, they were doing it on the floor loaded with soap bubbles. So go figure. He needs to get her fixed, but she's an older model, and to get parts, he needs to venture into the dangerous zone seven. He hires Edith. E. Johnson, Melanie Griffith, a hard-nosed, experienced tracker to lead him there. What? Wow! Why didn't he just take her like to a, you know, a fix store? You know, like. <laughs> I mean, honestly, when I think about like the Matrix, I just think, well, this it, this all could have been prevented if someone had like, you know, installed you know malware or just you know, antivirus. And they could, oh, this is the movie. What? This is, is the movie. So what's it called? Because I remember this. Like she's carrying. I think that's the movie. Cherry 2000. Yeah. But I don't remember a lot about it. But anyways. A lot of build up for that. I know. It wasn't even that great. To be honest. <laughs> it's just. No, I mean, it's the best movie ever. I just had a thing for this lady. And I was watching. No, it's not even. I don't remember. Yeah, this is it. Uh, well, well, whatever. Yeah, but a lot of cartoon girls. Yeah, it's okay. I crush on. I don't, nothing wrong with that. Video game characters too. I had a thing for Bulma from Dragon Ball Z for a while. I think a lot of people did. Yeah. This is what I was introduced to. You know, I used to love Dragon Ball Z too until, you know, I realized how long each episode is and how there's no plot movement for like six <laughs> episodes and just a lot of screaming. But that was intense though. When they just stare at the boss and then they're they're like, how do we get over this this guy's immense power? And they oh, 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 how, how do we, how did he do that? Yeah, but then the very next season, they find someone that's three, like a thousand times stronger than the guy they just beat, and somehow they find a way to get stronger than that guy. Isn't it's, that interesting? Uh, barely though. They're like each time, yeah. I mean, Naruto did the exact same thing. Each time, like if he, he got done fighting like uh, Pain, okay, cool. Pain was like a, a immense character. He had to go. <laughs> cool, done. All right, makes sense. He destroyed the whole. <laughs> but then, <laughs> are you kidding me? They just hanging hanging out behind there let's just let's see how strong he is apparently he's the strongest god dang shinobi of all of them and then he's like let's unlock um, well i'm gonna unlock my nine tails and then okay cool i guess i beat these guys now next guy you know then they find the person that created beat them couldn't go any further burrito and then burrito has all these characters that are a billion times stronger than the person that created 
Are you kidding? No, it, I can't. I want. I like those. I like watching them because they have action and everything. But as story goes, you're just saying I'm just basically waiting till the end of the season to find out how they find a way to beat the strong person before someone else just shows up that's a billion times stronger. But the right. But it always happens at the right time, though, right? Yeah. J- the the person is always just strong enough to yeah. challenge them and to like potentially end the world, and then they overcome them. So with it, friendship it, or screaming. Yeah. Which even though I know that, it gets me every time. <laughs> It just gets me every time, and I'm yeah. like, friends matter. <laughs> but like, like those are great for like mainstream everything. But like those great ones, like Promise Neverland, that yeah. first episode messed me up right? deeply. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, immediately. And like the whole whole season was great. First season, fantastic. A lot of a great little psychological thrill, like thrill ride. It was great. And then at the end of the season, you're like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. Where are we going now? They finally, they well, I don't want to spoil it, but you know. It goes through, and they're like, okay, great. This is a fantastic way to end the season. And then season two was uh, literally garbage. The whole it was pretty bad. It but was. I still had to finish it because I'm like, okay, this might get better. Yeah. And, and, you're, and you're hoping that you're going to feel the same emotion you felt in the first one. But it, it never really comes. No. Because the first one, I would get goosebumps. And I, I remember I said to myself, like, on the couch, on that couch behind you, yeah. alone, watching the Netflix. And just, I think it was like second or third episode into the first season of promise neverland and i just whispered to myself i said this is a masterpiece yes. <laughs> i said no, that to yeah. myself it was it, like yeah. there was no there's no fat on the episodes every single scene needed to happen mm-hmm. and everything was integral to the for the exploration of the characters development and the every all the kids and then and then the end of the season was fantastic it, like they well, I'll also got almost split, but yeah, go we'll, we'll watch it. It's amazing. Then, but then for season two, read the manga instead. Yeah, that, I got to read the manga on that. Yeah, I did yeah. that for Demon Slayer. I watched the first season. Don't Demon say Slayer. don't say nothing about the Demon Slayer. Right now. I watched the whole manga. I only watched the first manga. season, but I did watch the movie Mugen Train. But don't say nothing. Mugen Train made me cry. I did, cried. Did you okay? Well, did you watch it in theaters? Yeah. You cried in theaters? Hell yeah, I cried in theaters. I cried in theaters too. Hell yeah. by myself. But were you with your wife? Uh, no, I saw it by myself. Okay, then double, double high five. Yeah, I cried by myself. No shame on that. Well, because she hadn't gotten to Demon Slayer yet, and then she saw like all everyone's like, "Oh my god, Demon Slayer is amazing!" And then she just binge watched the whole season, and then she cried uh, uh, once she watched Mugen Train. We would we watched it on Funimation at home. Damn. Yeah, that was. Oof. I, that that one messed me up. It was it, it, it did mess me up. It, Demon it Slayer is really great man. about right before a character dies, they just show the backstory, everything right the backstory of just the most wholesome, most disturbing thing, and you're like, oh my god, I love this character, and then two seconds later, clock, like, ah, yeah. oh, thanks for getting me attached to the character so much. Yeah, but even but they do a great job even humanizing the uh, the bad the bad yeah, guys because they do yeah. the same exact thing. No spoilers, by the way. Don't worry, guys. But 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 yeah, then you feel fucking you empathize for the bad people too because you're like well they're not in in, they're not like inherently bad either they thought you know they all had their reasons for whatever they do right and fucking shit happens and you know um you know they're always there's always people getting down their luck and then they're at this point where they're they have nowhere else to go and then someone offers them a way out they're like yeah i'll become a demon and they don't see what how bad it is and then they just accept the role the life they've been given yeah and they're like fuck this is what i gotta do and yeah. uh i don't think that's that different from like human nature and, and what happens to yeah. people in real life speaking of which uh you have an only fans yeah i really wanted to talk about that okay which Go ahead. you know there was one point where uh, <clears throat> i think you made a post on facebook or something that said that you like some dude wanted you to send like a full body naked photo and it paid for like your rent or something. Pay for my movie to your go movie see. Oh, your movie yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to go see uh, Spider Man No Way Home. Yeah. I was about to text you and be like, I want to see that photo. Because <laughs> yeah. I wanted to know. I mean, blur out the, the private parts, but I wanted to know. I already posted. It was on my OnlyFans. It's just me looking like, like it, I was in a, a, a hotel room in Arizona doing a, sh- a show with my. My wife was there, and the look outside the window is like that red, red sign. So it looked like really kind of like uh, almost like Sin City Noir. So it was just me with my leg up, and then you, I just held, held my balls up a little bit, and then she took a picture, and that was it. Yeah. Also, oh, I have reg- I have Regal Unlimited, so my movie tickets are only like fifty cents per. So it was only like a dollar. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were giving like fifty bucks or something. No, not for that one. I posted it on my OnlyFans wall, and people just gave me like a, somebody gave tipped me for it. 
I, 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 I yeah, I've that's really thoughtful. I've lost. I've gone from a very conservative household growing up to being completely open about everything in the world, and I, I just don't care. You, you're basically California at this rate. Yeah, anime, Asian food, OnlyFans. You are California. Yeah, well, I mean, I just saw people making so much money on OnlyFans. Like, well, someone's got to like this. I, I started with like posting. So like funny things, no one liked it, and I posted like a video of me eating pasta in the shower, and then a lot of people liked it. And I was like, <laughs> "This is what?" Yeah, I was like, it was, "Eating pasta in the shower I was the- it was from here up, and I was just eating pasta. I didn't even look at the camera, and it was like a good thirty like thirty seconds. And I was just eating it, and like fell off on my chest hair, <laughs> and yeah, a lot of people liked it, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I guess I'm a niche market." And then yeah, and then it just spiraled out of there. And I was like, one like one dude's like, hey, can I see your back hair? And I was <laughs> like, your back hair for real? Yeah, he's like, he gave me twenty bucks, and I sent him a picture of my back. That's it. Yeah, and your face isn't even on it, so nobody would even know. Well, then there was one where it was a pic. He was like, can I see a picture of your bulge? And that was another twenty bucks, and that was full full body. Bulge or balls? Bulge. Like you want to see? You want to see me in tight underwear? Okay. Yeah. All right. Boxer briefs. Uh, there, I don't know. There are ones that are very tight. I don't know the difference. <laughs> okay, so you wore those. You had a bulge, and then you just full body. You sent it to him, and he's just like, "Oh God, thank yeah. you." And he sent me twenty bucks. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm comfortable with my body. I'll, if someone, no, wants, no, you're giving me ideas, man. Yeah, of like what I could do because I was do against it. it before. I was like, "It's gonna hurt my career," but I'm like, "Wait a minute, what career?" First of all, and second of all, the things I've posted online up to this point with the things I've said. If anything, that would hurt me more. Trying to do, I don't know. But I already gave up on Hollywood. I don't give a fuck about Hollywood. So the way I'm going is, I'll, like, we're stand-up comedians and we just kind of do whatever the fuck we want. And and I asked you this before too, and you're like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna really hurt you, right? I mean, I mean why would it hurt you? Who's gonna be? Who's gonna look down on you for promoting your body and then letting people look at it? That's that's true. Because then you could say. That's fat shaming. You're fat shaming me. No, not even just that. It's just like it's promoting body positivity. I'm very open about that. My wife takes his picture sometimes. I mean, making money in comedy is hard, but it's a lot easier than just laying in bed and just taking a kind of like a sexy. I even posted pictures of my the the boudoir pictures I did for my wife. She she loved it. I did like my boudoir? wife did boudoir pictures for me for like an anniversary, like our second or third anniversary, and then for her. I did the exact same poses she did for me for her. Like so she'd be like oh, yeah. she's like okay. this. And yeah, I did yeah. the exact same one, the exact same poses. <laughs> and like she she went to like a nice photographer. I did somebody like a buddy of mine, like a friend of mine, she just did it in a hotel room for me. That's fucking And I funny. even threw like fake flowers in the air. <laughs> and I gave it to her. She's like, these are horrible. I was like, You're welcome. I hope you know how much I love you for this. And you posted those. Yeah, and people liked them. What do you say like? I mean, like a lot of like a lot of likes. Um, yeah, yeah, likes. But do they tip you sometimes? Yeah, some people tip me. Yeah, I mean, okay. like if I in all honestly, I've made like maybe through four to five hundred dollars on OnlyFans, and, and that's before. Of- and I've like maybe six months, and that's without any nudity, like not any like full hardcore nudity. That's just me being uh, just myself, wow. videos, whatever. That's a, you know, considering that there is no nudity, that's really good. Yeah, like you know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people like people are like, hey, man, 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 seriously, like, how much to see your like see your front? How much to see your dick? I was like, no, I'm good. It's not just because I don't want it online. It's just because it's weird. It's just weird for me to like look at my penis. I, mean, like, I don't know how to present it, but you know, I mean, it's what I mean. What's it, what's going to hurt my career more? Honestly, I could just if it, if my career goes like skyrockets, just take it down. And if anyone brings it up, I'm like, yeah, I did it. So, but you're a comedian. Like, like I feel like stand up comics, we get away with a lot more stuff because it's just, oh, that's what a comic would. Versus if you're like, uh, just like a Hollywood actor, they have a lot to lose. I feel yeah. like. I mean, I mean, it's what scrutiny is people going to say? I mean, the only thing I can think of is like, well, that's not really family and wholesome. I'm like, well, I did it. I need. I wanted money. I was able to take care of my family with some of that money. I don't see the downside. And unless you go out looking for it, unless you subscribe to my page, you're not going to be able to see it. So, I mean, it's not like I'm sending it out to everybody. I'm like, hey, look at my penis. Look, I made a little heart next to it. You know, I'm not doing that. I'm just, it's a, like, it's a business. It's, that's what OnlyFans is, is your business and your business is you. 
That's true, man. But I do, I do like seeing like the commercials for OnlyFans, like people playing tennis, like show people what you got. And I was like, no, that's not the kind of balls you're gonna be seeing on OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. wait, like, wait, they're, they're using tennis to market OnlyFans. Yeah, you're like for like the I think it was like a span of like a month. They they tried to make posting like illicit like explicit stuff on OnlyFans. They were trying to ban that. But then they realized that like 96% of the market of OnlyFans is people posting just like explicit stuff. True. And then they stopped it. They're like, they were going to ban it. They were going to like get rid of it. You couldn't post that stuff. You had to direct message it. And I think they got so much backlash from it. They're like, what? no, 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 please stay. Please stay. Yeah. It's hurting them more than from like the whatever other people they were worried about. Right. Yeah. The outside fucks. Yeah. I mean, as this as society evolves, we become more open to sex and doing that stuff so i mean it was if this was like 10 years ago yeah people would i wouldn't be doing this true i've had people ask me to like send photos of my my feet or uh they're like can you send can you make a video of you shaving your head because that's like a fetish thing too but the eating thing's a definite fetish like people oh, I mean, yeah. you see like those like 600 pound women that eat and People pay them just send them money to buy food to eat on camera. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and there was this uh, that woman that was on uh, Ninety Day Fiance that was selling her farts. Oh, and then she almost died yeah. selling her farts because she was eating like a horrible diet just made to make her fart. And yeah, it was, was like beans and eggs. Yeah, she was forcing herself to do it. Yeah. yeah, I mean the crazy thing is like in this today nowadays, I mean you do stuff for money and you'll do crazy stuff, but just imagine it's even crazier to think about the people are like. Hey, for a thousand dollars, you send me a can of your farts. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. no one gives a crap that, that there's people asking for it. They only give a crap that like there's someone doing it. I mean, she's marketing herself, making forty, like almost ninety thousand dollars on people that are requesting for her to send her a jar of their of her farts, and no one cares that there's people out there doing that. They only care that she's doing it. Yeah, I mean, that's the I'm, I'm more weird weird out by the people I was just like. Hey, um, I got a weird question for you. Um, you got, I really loved you on 90 day fiance, your story about love and, you know, overcoming love because it crossed into and great everything. But anyway, I want to smell your farts in a jar and I want to see a video of you doing that thousand dollars. And she's like, oh yeah, I don't got 90 day fiance money anymore. Let's do it. You know what I mean? I would do it. I would do it. Especially and it'd be funny. Like, yeah. I'll just make a compilation of just every time I farted in a jar. And then that one time, I, I'm like, I think I shit myself. Boom. Punch. What's it? The, great, the weird thing about it is, like, the the science behind it, too, is, like, I didn't even think that you could trap farts in a jar and then distribute them. I was like, I didn't think that was real. And then you got all these people just buying mason jars, just like, okay, all right, got it. Honey, <laughs> come in here and smell this. Like... <laughs> Like, I didn't even know you could trap for it. I didn't even think that was physically possible. Dude, I just imagine it's like the the husband's uh the the wife's birthday, right? Yeah. And he's, he comes up to her in the house in the living room and he's got his hands behind his back. He's like, honey, I know you love 90 day fiance. Uh who's your who's your favorite? Again? Who's your favorite? <laughs> yeah, right. uh, what's that girl's name? I can't remember. Okay, we'll call it Christina. Chris, Christina, you know that. I'm like, well <laughs> uh you know how much I love you, and today's your birthday, and uh, <clears throat> I got a jar of Christina's fart for you. <laughs> but he's being dead serious. He's like, "I love you," and here is Christina's farts. You know, in his head, he's probably like, "This is she's gonna love this," and then you know, when he sees a horror, f- horrific face on her, he's like, "Oh, maybe I've messed up. Maybe I shouldn't have spent a thousand dollars on someone's farts. On a fart. On a fart. Yeah. I mean, there's like there's people that were like, uh, remember that girl that was selling her bath water? Belle Delphine. Yeah. Yeah. I like how hot. you immediately yeah. remember her name. Yeah, because I was gonna bring her up, but also like I was trying to find like naked videos of her. All right. Yeah. Because she's she's hot. Yeah. She's very attractive. So I wanted to see. I wanted to see. You. Yeah, I was she, curious. She was selling like her bath water for like a cup of it for like forty five bucks, and she sold out in like. Eight minutes. Yeah. A whole bath of water. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't put, I don't put her down for it all for doing it, but she marketed herself so well that she could sell her bath water, sell out of it in eight minutes. Mm -hmm. And no one ever's like, there's people buying bath water. It's always like, why is she doing that? It's like, well, if she could market herself and make a living on that, 
And this is a, this is this amazing world that we live in, where there's people that are like, I have enough extra income, <laughs> like I can spend this on someone's bathwater, and no one bats an eye about that. It's just what we can do. Yeah, and I think she made um, from like the reports. I can't remember exactly, but I think she had to have made at least like one to two million or something like that. Yeah. Just some crazy amount of money. Which good on her for doing that, because yeah. like, but you're 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 absolutely right. Why does nobody question? The psychology of the people that not only thought of wanting it or, or, asked, or and, and asked for it. Asked for it and then paid them for that. Exactly, right? Yeah. Like, send it, ship it over. Like, when I first bought a flashlight, there was a lot of shame and guilt and, like, embarrassment, even though I was like, oh, my God, is somebody going to fucking see the box and know it's a yeah. flashlight in the box? Yeah. You know? So, I can only imagine, like, and that's, like a, like, a sex toy, which is, like, for myself, and it's not bath water. So, then I'm thinking... Do these people that bought it, is there an element of like this weird mix of excitement from the guilt of like it, this is being weird? Kind of like when you watch porn and you go down a rabbit hole of like some fucked, you need to watch more fucked up shit to get a response from your body because you adapt to yeah. what you're watching. Or are they just like super fanboys or sick fucks? Like a full, like something's fucked. Like I guarantee you, some people fucking, you know how you get like a glass of wine and. You swirl it around. <laughs> you just <laughs> smell it. And you know, sip it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Swish it around your mouth. It's got a hint of a... Uh, I've never uh, had wood. wine before. What? Never had wine. Or, or mostly any alcohol. Never tasted alcohol, pretty much. There's alcoholics in your family? Mm-hmm. That's yep. why. So you, you... Yeah, I never just never got into it. Also, because it was super expensive. And I was like, well, I could pay $5 for something that tastes horrible... Or I can pay two dollars for an unlimited Coca Cola. Mm, Made sense to me. Yeah, and which one's gonna give you a lot of regrets in society? The Coca Cola would be like a more personal regret if you drink too much and you have like heart problems. Oh yeah, I mean I was drinking like five cokes a day and I had the like kidney stones every two months. Are we talking cans or cans? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a lot of coke, man. Yeah, and then like my like I think it was right when the pandemic started, uh, like when you couldn't like my wife dropped me off at the ER. And then she just went home. She didn't stay. She wasn't even worried by it. She was so, <laughs> it was so normal for me to go to the ER for kidney stones. Seriously. And then after that, I never drank another Coke. And it's been like almost a year and a half. I've what never, does a kidney stone feel like? It feels like someone stabbing you with a hammer, a hammer knife and just hitting you on the side for like a good two and a half hours until you pass it. Fuck, dude. Yeah, it's like, I think like they consider it. I I know I, I shouldn't say it, but even doctors are telling me that it's it's like worse than uh, birth giving birth. It's worse pain than giving. See, birth. See, I was thinking really pregnancy, and then you said it, and I'm like, yeah. Shit. That's, I mean, I was like, I was like, well, I've never given birth, so I can't compare it. But like, I've spoken to women that have given birth and passed kidney stones, and they say kidney stones are much worse than childbirth. I was like, that's crazy. But I've passed oh. like maybe like. Th- Close to like fifty, like fifteen to twenty kidney stones. Jesus Christ, you're you're fucking, and you didn't learn after the first five. Yeah, I was addicted to Coke. Jesus, I like Coca Cola. Diet Coke or regular Coke? Regular Coke. Yep. Fuck. A lot of people get addicted to Diet Coke. Well, I mean, they say it's, it's better for you, but it's really not. No, I mean, it's not. Yeah, and that's why like I stopped getting, I stopped drinking sugar all the time, and like I stopped drinking sugar. I drink Zevia. It's like uh, stevia water, mm-hmm. stevia sugar, so it doesn't really affect you that all. And drink that instead, like, like teeth teeth. Teeth got better, like my diet got better, lost like, f- I was like 317, 320, and now I'm like 270 now. So that Damn, was. Damn, that's good. Yeah, feels that's good. Weight loss shit, man. Yeah. Kidney stones, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's, that's what I grew up with. I mean, like ever since leaving the South, like when I was, like it was in Michigan, I even went to a therapist and they told me like I had, as before I got diagnosed with it, but I have decristic seizures, which it, it triggers by epilepsy. So if there's flashing lights, yeah. uh, decristic seizures are, I start crying. I start like, it's a seizure where I, I cry. It's a involuntary crying. Oh. And yeah. <laughs> okay. Remember, remember the Joker? Yeah. 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 You know yeah. how he laughs under control when, when, he, when he's uh, scared or whatever. Or like, yeah, he it, it triggers. Yeah. 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 It's the exact same thing, except I cry. Okay. All right, man. Okay. <laughs> the word seizure and then, like that being the response, isn't what I would imagine. Are you imagine like seizure, like shaking? Yeah. And like- because when I hear that, it's just funny because it's like I just cry, man. It's involuntary crying, but it's just you're just so serious, and you're like, this yeah. is not. But it's not a problem because 
you just cry, right? Nothing else happens besides crying. Well, yeah, I mean, I can't. It's harder to breathe because I'm. Okay, see, I'm well, now crying. that you add that, I'm not gonna yeah. laugh at you anymore. Yeah. Thanks, it's just, appreciate. It. You, yeah, you yeah. cut me off like <laughs> that's not a big deal. I mean, what a, what a fucking pussy! You no. can't take a little bit of crying. Your brain shutting down and you can't breathe. What a fucking. Now bear. say it in your accent now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that, right. Yeah. But uh, uh, okay, so okay. So like it's like let's say if someone like there's flashing lights, sure. like, it'll come over here. I'll feel like a lot of pain right temple, here around the temple area, and then it'll just start pouring out, and I'll can't breathe for like a good five or six seconds, and then you know it's oh shit yeah it's okay. I think like maybe eight eighty two people in the world have been diagnosed with it, and it's usually Damn. it's only like kids, but okay it's hard to get diagnosed with it. You have to get um a, a, my psychiatrist noticed it he saw it happen he said yeah that's your that's definitely a seizure how did your psychiatrist see that happen what were they doing like turning I was, the light off and on no i was on i was in a zoom call and i was like hey i have i involuntarily i cry just randomly it happens all the time nothing could be happening it just feels like he's like does the pain right here come over i was like yeah it comes over i, don't, I can't explain it it's been hap- happening my whole life he's like oh yeah that's definitely that sounds like a seizure and wow. then I got diagnosed with it. Um, yeah, it's decreased seizures. Yeah, the one that the Joker has, like it's kind of like I think it's like uh, I see some other form of the seizure, but it's like involuntary laughing. Okay, when did you find this out <clears throat> that you have it? Last or, year. So you've been going your whole life, not really. Because if I was you and I was like shedding tears randomly with a headache, I just I would, thought it was sad. That's what I would feel too. Yeah. So then now, looking back on all those moments where you were like. I think I was depressed because because of this. This thing made me mad, or this, or, or sad, or this. What I went to person. the therapist with it yeah. in Michigan. He told me it might be demons. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, that doesn't make any sense. And that was right when Constantine came out. So I was like, every time I went to like a club, I was like, there's demons in here. And I was like, I thought it was like some demon hunter or some. There's demons in this place. I thought Skrillex was a Satan because I just saw flashing lights all the time. You start crying like taking over me, and you're like, I need to get a fucking priest right yeah, now. I was like. I'm gonna just purge this place of demons. Damn. Okay. Okay. So, so Zoom in a Zoom call. Does that mean when you watch TV? No. I mean, it's it's sporadic, but it like uh, there was just one time in like Arizona. Uh, I was we were going to McDonald's. It was the only thing that was open at the time, and there was a flashing light above us. And it's my wife's like, "Are you okay?" I was like, "Oh, I'm fine." And then when I noticed it, it was just coming on, and then it started coming on pretty hard, and then. I couldn't breathe and I was just like, I was crying my eyes out and it was like, you can, I can function completely. I can have mm. my eyes open, but have you ever tr- tried crying deeply with your eyes wide open? No, no, that's crazy. Yeah. I just saw right, you doing yeah. it right now. Yeah. And like this it slightly just dark. It over. I just, that's tears terrifying. Come out. That yeah. actually scares the shit out of me. Yeah. That is like an animated fucking uh, 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 yeah. villain. Yeah, I know, right? With, yeah. And they go, <sighs> Yeah, and their eyes like dilate, and like yeah, they get yeah. that that red sheen over it, and you just they just start murdering a bunch of people. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then when they start like getting louder and louder, and then they have the knife, and they're, they're they have like kind of like a like like a comb over a little bit, wearing a suit with pinstripes. Oh yeah, Neo Genesis Evangelion, like the last oh, fucking, yeah, Neo fucking last three episodes like, wrecked me, wrecked me emotionally. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it was like. I used to love those shows. Like I used to watch Inuyasha. That used to, used to mess with me until I realized it was just poor planning on their part. Well, I didn't watch all the way. I, I watched Inuyasha for like the first maybe eighty episodes, and then I was like, I just I can't care. Is it that heavy? Is that why? Yeah. Well, not just that. It's just that every single episode is just like, okay. I mean, they're gonna get one more shard, but when's it gonna end? I mean, oh. Naruto had the exact same thing. It just yeah. he. At when he be, finally, I was like, okay, I'm with it because he's going to become a Hukage one day. I know it. He's going to be yeah, a Hukage. Because he said it. Yeah. I mean, from the beginning. Uh, yeah. For episode one, I was like, okay, he's going to be a Hukage. Okay. That's when the, the episode's going to, that's when it's going to stop. Yeah. Just like Ash Ketchum becoming a Pokemon master. It took him like 17 seasons, but he won. And then after that, I was like, there should be no more episodes. He became Pokemon master. That's it. Roll yeah. credits. That's, that's done. But when he became like, like, I think it was like, what? Like 125 episodes for Naruto, and then Shupiden was like maybe 180. You're just like, okay, <sighs> okay, Karama, okay, you're a nine tailed fox, cool. I mean, oh my god, why is there so much strong? And he became a Kage. I was like, okay, cool, roll credits. Bruto came. I was like, no, no, we're not doing this again. <laughs> yeah. We're not going through three, 400 episodes of the endearing stuff, and then you taking people's lives away. Like, don't you take people's lives like that again.
Yeah, and it, it, that's why I didn't watch Boruto because it's at that point it's not some kid that was suffering who who was shunned by society. Now it's like, hey, my dad gave me a silver spoon to help me get you know progress. Like I don't want to watch oh that. God, I want to watch you. suffering. I want to yeah. watch full blown suffering. And the and the Pokemon thing with about Ash. What was the song before he became Pokemon Master? I want to be the very best that no, no one's ever was. done. But he did that. Yeah. So they have to make a new song. <laughs> I'm the very best now. I need to find something else to do. Yeah. I also don't like how they sometimes in anime where it's like you, you see that progression of like them and they're always doing great. But I like how Pokemon and even Naruto, they failed, like failed a lot. Mm-hmm. They would get their ass or just handed to them and then they would almost just completely just ruin themselves and then they would find a way to overcome and then still lose like it shows you that there's a progression even if you try your best sometimes you'll fail and that's okay True. that's True. And i get that just like attack on time oh god attack i mean on Titan. i'm not caught up in, i didn't i'm not talking about the manga because like i'm only caught up to the current season which like what four the first well, half the, of four and they're gonna release second half the second half starts the, uh next week oh shit yeah See? it's the final season too but do you know why i love the tag on Titan so much because this is not a spoiler guys i'm not gonna say names but this is what happens through from the very beginning to like if you end. haven't watched P- yeah i mean we, we spoiled naruto I mean, I'll, I'll probably bleep attack, out I'll, attack I'll bleep on titan out some of the words, has been though. out for like four years now the yeah. manga's already been done for like three years yeah Somehow I didn't get that part spoiled though, like the, the like Attack on Titan. So don't say nothing, don't say nothing. But the reason why I love the Attack on Titan so much, and especially like within the first episode or two, was people that you thought were gonna live for like, because in, in anime, the main people they live for the longest time, like the longest. They have right? plot armor, right? Yeah, the yeah. most horrific, just like a, a bomb could go off. Mm-hmm. And just wreck everyone, but that person somehow survives, and it's just, it's it takes you out of the experience of like, oh, this could be plausible. I mean, exactly. even if it isn't like a, a an, an, like a, a for like a crazy world, I still want to be grounded in some sorts of reality that I can, can so I can continue with it. Like promising Neverland, you at any point you're like these something bad could happen mm-hmm. and you never felt like everyone everyone felt like they're on table just like Game of Thrones was like that too. That was a great thing about that is that you felt like everyone was on the table. Everyone's on the table of the executioner block and no one was safe. And that felt that tenseness. Mm-hmm, Tackle Titan mm-hmm. was great with that. Mm-hmm. First episode, fucking died. Just everybody died. Everybody. Everybody like, fucking they died. Straight up it was like what, maybe like six minutes in, and they just straight up just blew that that that, that wall up. Yeah. So it, it set the tone of this is what's gonna happen. That's when I was like, Oh, this is different. Yeah. This is different than all the other animes. That's why there is constant tension, and that's why when they lose or or well, they lose a lot, but when they win, then you're like, yes, yes. they fucking want because they, they earn that that win because any one of them could go at any time and people fucking die, and which is like real life, which is why like, you know, you had that, consequences. Right? You had you had an actual stakes in the matter. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have pe- we have anime characters with like with plot armor. There's no stakes. You know that these people are going to survive, but these people that have not spoken this entire time, they probably will go. But when you see like, you know, any character like a character they that grew from like the first three episodes and they're just gone the fourth episode and you're like oh maybe they'll come back they don't they yeah. you can hardcore see their dead body <laughs> and like when they're cleaning up remember when they're cleaning up and they're just like oh yeah i remember that guy and it flashed back to him like in training camp you're like oh my god that person's dead like that yeah. you can see half of their body and i was like okay Let's get wrecked. Let's get wrecked with emotion on this one. Attack, yeah. Like Attack on Titan was was one of my favorite. Is one of my favorite animes. Hundred yeah. percent. A lot of a lot of uh, investing goes into that, and um, I think you can compare it to like when you first hear that somebody you know dies, you're like, what? Is yeah. It, it was kind of like that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, especially when like you start off with that that world of like, you know, they don't over over tell you what's going on. Like they don't tell you where the Titans are coming from. They don't tell you where all these things are from. But then, you know, as the story goes on, they tell you more. You're like, oh, my God, are you yeah. kidding me? And when you find out exactly where they're from, you're like, oh, OK, now I'm more invested. And even though they like season three was just, you know, them explaining everything and then like it had a little bit of action. I was fine with that because I I grew. I grew with those, those characters and like found more about. True. Yeah. True. Because I want to like I want to grow with the characters, too, because I want to understand things that are going on and like uh you know, even with fun, like fun animes, like uh, like I maxed out my defense, so now I'm unbeatable. That was a good anime on Funimation, where she's like, she put all of her stats in defense, and now she's unbeatable. She just keeps getting stronger, but then she sometimes fails. I'm like, okay, that's great. You're seeing that even those 
no matter how much hard work you put in it, sometimes you can still fail, even though you put all this, you got to do stuff you don't want to do, even though you're trying your best not to do that, you know? Lessons. There's always life lessons in anime, yeah. which is why I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, like, people are like, oh, why do you watch anime? I was like, I mean, I, I cried on Attack on, the first episode, I cried Attack on Titan. Yeah. That was, that that put me on a roller coaster. And a lot, a lot of people, when they talk to me, they're like, you like anime? I was like, yeah, I'll go in there. I could talk about anime for hours. <laughs> Joe's Jotaro was like one of my favorite ones too. This is oh yeah, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I fucking love Jojo's so Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> or my favorite. <laughs> like the cherry. Remember that cherry when he was just licking it? Like, yeah, that was funny, dude. Oh my god, it's but, so amazing. But the animation on that, like, I love it's that. It's slick. It's it, I do like how every character is either super fit or fat as hell. <laughs> There's no in between. But they're all eccentric. Yeah. And they all own whatever personality that they have. And it's not like, oh, this person's like a freak. It's like, everybody's fucking weird. <laughs> everybody's fucking weird. And, and it, it somehow each season ties back, even though it's a completely different character, they tie back to one, to the, the other person some weird way. Yeah. They're all, they're all connected. You watch subbed or dub? I I prefer dub. I know it's, I know it's controversial, but I, I don't care. Because I, I don't I don't sit there and, and stare at it. I do other things. Like I'll study while I watch anime. Like, I, but if I get invested, in it, I'll stop watching it. But I, I like dub. I what, like, are you, what are you studying while you're watching anime? Oh, I'm in school for cybersecurity right now. Okay, okay. So you're watching anime and you're studying to protect people's uh, computers and information. And, and yeah. information. Yeah. I don't trust you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> the weirdest thing. I was, I was this, is why, this is why I hide my accent. Because if even if I talk about security or computers, people when I talk about computers, if I have an accent, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Your BIOS just needs to be reset because you put RAM in it, and and once you flash the BIOS, then your computer will accept the new RAM, and then it'll be able to see it in the task manager. People are like, I didn't understand. What did you say? They're just they're just hearing me say, oh yeah, your magic picture box ain't working. You just gotta hit it, and that'll make it work again. <laughs> I completely hide my accent because it sound it's people it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. But when you're talking a southern accent, it doesn't matter how technically you are, it sounds people are like, I don't think that's true. Well, you know what's funny is I actually wasn't even talking about your southern accent. Yeah. I was talking about the fact that you're watching anime as you're studying. I'm like, what are you fucking learning? Oh, so like I'm I have a secure certification exam next Friday. No, but how are you doing both? At the same time, not hard. I just read, and then I'm here in the anime, and then oh, it's just kind of background noise. I have a lot, like I have ADHD, man. I can concentrate on like three things at one time. Okay, I don't think ADHD works that way. It does for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, that's like that's like saying I have dyslexia. I can read three books at once. <laughs> like, yeah, not well, but I'm still doing it. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Do I know what? Do I know what I'm looking at? Am I registering what I'm reading? Am I even reading? I got to reread stuff a lot, yeah. but I'm still there. I'm looking at the books. I'm I, looking. I swear to God, my wife, when we watched Game of Thrones, she was she is so bad at watching shows that we, we watched season one, episode one, like maybe four or five times. Are you serious? I was just like, baby, you need to watch this part. He's going to push that kid out of the, uh, that tower. She's like, I didn't, I didn't see that part. I'm like, hey, baby, it's integral to the plot. I was like on season six. I was like, baby, if you want to get into this, we'll, we'll do this. But you got to give me some attention. You got to give me some of your attention sometimes. She's like, okay. And then it'll happen. And she's like, TikTok. Just, oh, oh, my God, man. what happened? I'm like, we, we, I've rewatched, I've rewatched so many episodes of Night Day Fiance, Married at First Sight like four or five times because she forgot or she just said, did we watch this? Like, like I did. I watched this, this episode three or four times. We both did. She's like, was I asleep? I was like, I didn't think you were, <laughs> but apparently you were. Then you're patient. Yeah. I you're mean, very fucking patient. Yeah. Shit. It's okay. <laughs> when am I get upset with her because she didn't watch it? She just rewatch it. Okay. See, I'm the asshole here. Cause I will get very upset after the second time. I'm like, after, after like, fucking maybe the fourth or fifth time of having to do that over and over and over you know the first couple of times it's like i love you i forgive you and after that i'm like are you trying to get back at me for something i did <laughs> <laughs> well just think about it like this just think about like well i mean you once you finally watched it and you got into it it was so amazing to you i mean if it just takes three or four times and she's like then she sees how awesome it is then she'll pay attention to it more 
That's true. Man, you should be a fucking teacher. I was for like four years. Well, shit, that makes sense then. <laughs> uh, this this man's got patience for uh, uh, which is great for children's development. <laughs> I was a teacher in Detroit for like four years. Uh, did did student teaching in Detroit, and then I did about one year as a as an actual teacher, and then the school shut down, and then I was like, well. I don't want to do it. After like, I, you, I think of like fifty to sixty percent of pe- of new teachers within the first two years they quit. Yeah. It's awful. In general or specifically in general. Detroit? No, in general. Yeah. Because you have to you uh, you get paid horrible pay, and then it's not like forty hours and you're done. You got to go home. You got to create tests. You got great tests. That's true. You don't get paid for that. You got like uh, for me, it was a music teacher, so I had to pay for the music because. We, our music you budget. You gotta pay for the music. Yeah, so I pay like four hundred bucks for some marching band music, for um, marching band. I wasn't, I wasn't the teacher, but I the teacher couldn't afford it, uh, so I was like, all right, let's do this. Um, we'll go ahead and get it. I just deducted it on my taxes the next year, but still, I was just like, I had to pay out of my pocket for music because music they had was wasn't that great. So I was like, all right, let's do it, and. They, the school that couldn't afford it. I mean, they were they wanted all their money to go to like football and everything, but the arts really suffers for that stuff. Damn, dude. Yeah, I'm that like sucks. a powdered keg of of, of lived per, of a person. I live. I've lived so many things in lives. I've been all around the world. I was in China, Japan. I've already been all those places. I got people thought I was somebody else in China, which was really fun. Who do you think you were? I thought it was Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> I went to China in 2009 and I was, uh, I was walking around, had my full grown beard and my beard was out about here. Yeah. It was right about two weeks after the hangover came out in China wow. and people were just walking up to me and they were handing, they were like asking me to sign posters of the hangover and they even made me hold their baby. I was like, even if I was that gal from yes, why would you have me hold your baby? That doesn't, I signed Anthony Davis on those posters too. Oh, did you? That's Absolutely. fucking hilarious. So there's some, there's probably some Asian, like there's some Chinese kid with like a poster of the hangover and it's just got <laughs> Anthony Davis over Zach Galvin. Yeah, I just imagine you signing and be like, this is for that time where I thought I got a tattoo that in Chinese that said strength, but it said pussy or something like that. So instead of Zach Galifianakis, Anthony Davis. <laughs> I just I just straight out wrote Anthony Davis on like maybe like five or six or posters. They wouldn't know. They wouldn't know though. It was just like, hey, whatever. Yeah. It makes them happy. <laughs> I might have chosen. What if they like eBayed that to other Chinese people? I I, I just what do they do with that? You ever think about that? Because you're not the only story where uh, there's like a random American person that is is confused for like just some fucking other like a celebrity. It was just yeah. I was just so taken aback. I was like. Hey, whatever. <laughs> if these people think I'm Zach Galifianakis, whatever. It's all good. Let's go along with it. Fuck yeah. it, man. I had, like, I had like maybe like three or four kids. I was just like holding the baby and I was smiling. <laughs> That's... <laughs> they were just taking pictures with me. It was so funny. It was so cool. Do you have any of the photos? I w- no, they were taken with their... like. They, we not, I don't think we had like... Uh, didn't have like good like fo- I didn't have a good phone. I had, like, oh, back phone. then, right? Oh, yeah, shit. It was like 2008 or 2009. That's so right. That's right. They had like, you know, click ones and everything and... I mean, who was I going to be like? Oh, hi. Can I use? Hi. I don't. I know you don't understand anything I'm saying, but can I take a? Can you show me that picture? <laughs> you, go, you go like, airdrop. Airdrop. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have airdrop back then. I didn't have. I've never had an iPhone. I, didn't, I don't even know what airdrop is. Oh, you have an Android. Mm-hmm. Okay, airdrop is basically like iPhone to iPhone. You can uh, directly send photos or videos like pretty quickly to each other, iPhone to iPhone. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't be like, here, text me that. Here, let me give you my number. Yeah. Four, four, three. <laughs> like basically like full quality. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, so you basically just information, information, you're just putting their phones together, putting in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's just like that, man. Yeah. It was, when I went to that, it was, it was hilarious. I just thought that was the, it was the funnest thing I could possibly happen to someone. It's just, I just had a full grown beard. Even my, my mom even got me a pic, uh, a, a shirt that had the baby on it with like sunglasses. Oh, shit. She's like, you look like the fat guy from the hangover. I was like, I'm your son. You shouldn't say I look like the fat guy of anybody. Okay. But thanks for the shirt. And I would wear that shirt everywhere. I, used to, <laughs> I, I love that movie too. It's like, it was a really good movie. Also a good way to introduce Bradley Cooper to the, to Hollywood. True. And tying with anime, the power of friendship, <laughs> right? The power of friendship. And there's wolf pack, wolf pack. <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, okay. If you had to leave 
the listeners and the viewers with something, anything. Could be something that's been in your head lately or some fucking random lesson or thing that you roll by. Could be deep, could be stupid. That doesn't fucking matter. Um, don't ever be ashamed of what you laugh at because it makes you happy and makes you laugh. Who are, who's, who's to judge you for what makes you happy? He's talking to you racists out there. Okay. Yep. Including racists. Just, just specifically. <laughs> <laughs> specifically racist. If you're a racist, and <laughs> laugh at people's. <laughs> I just realized how stupid that sounds. Never mind. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about no, if good. I'm on it's stage good. and I say something like really like messed up, people like, people feel hinged to laugh at it. I was like, no, it's okay. I was in that situation. I was in the South. At a clan beating accidentally, it wasn't. I didn't mean to be there. It's okay to laugh at that. Yeah, <laughs> just just like uh, basically just saying like you don't need to hold back your own energy and like your enjoyment for life because you're looking for permission from others around you. You know when people are you know, like they want to laugh at something at like a stand up show in particular and they're looking around like, can I laugh at this? Is this yeah. is okay? You yeah, know? or especially you know, I mean, just think about it, like there's people out there that's buying bath water from people. I mean, you're not the worst person in the world unless you're the yeah. person that buys bath water then. Hit me up on Instagram, 80 Comedy 28. I want to talk to you. That's right. 80 Comedy. Say that again. What, 80 what, Comedy 28. 80 Comedy 28. And Instagram and TikTok. So, yeah, hit me up. I would love to talk to someone that buys bath water or buys farts in a jar. I just want to know the, I just want to know the logistics of that. Yeah. But before you buy it from him, buy it from me first if that's what you want because uh, your boy needs some more money. Someone really you know, wants so. to see pictures of your feet? Dude, I used to get hit up a lot on Instagram. Like DMs, fucking. Was it guys or was it women? A lot of guys. I had a girl that doesn't make that that doesn't bother me at all because that seems like something that does happen. I mean, only people yeah. that hit me up on OnlyFans. It's all guys. It's never women. Yeah, guys have no shame with that. I think because I remember I posted up a, a, a clip of me singing karaoke and I had one sock mix missing, and then my aunt was recording me and zoomed in on my foot, and it zoomed out like, "Huh, that's funny," because it was it looked funny, and then because of that video, that like triggered people to come out of the woodwork and start, you know. Talking about my feet and some weird shit, but anyways, I have Hobbit feet. I wish you uh, have Hobbit feet. Hell yeah! I love Lord of the Rings. Can I look at your foot right now? I got compression socks on, so it might take me a bit. <laughs> yeah. Just take me a sock. Yeah, I'll put compression socks on, so it doesn't. Put on your OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> put on OnlyFans. My stocking pictures, so there's no bl- there's blood flow to my legs, even though I'm sitting down. So there's no problem. Be there fine. better be hair, otherwise we're not friends. There's plenty of hair. Oh my god! I got hairy feet too, man. I trim my foot here. Really. I do. My toe hairs, if I don't if I don't cut them, they get like an inch and a half. This is this is two I, I trimmed this yesterday, so this is like a after a day of trimming. Wow. Anyways, guys, <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for listening. This has been another episode of the Separate Podcast. And until then, I will see you on the next episode. Peace. <laughs>